Let's take a minute to discuss the budget template that you'll need to fill out and submit with your proposal. We'll provide the link where you can find it at the end of the webinar. This is one of six documents that you'll need to provide. This is a high level look at the template. There are 10 rows on the template and there are two pages. This is just one of the pages. If you need more than 20 rows for your project, you can reach out to us and we'll work with you. Let's drill down into each of the sections of the form and give you some guidance on how to fill it out. The first thing you'll want to do is to put your business name at the top. I'll highlight items in red to help you understand the areas that I'm talking about. If you have to use both pages, remember to put your business name on both pages. The tracking code there on the left is internal to MEDB and is there to help track receipts later on down the road. Please don't change the tracking code numbers. They're there to help us later. You'll need to fill out the service slash item description. In this example, we're using a restaurant that wants to accomplish four things. The first, next to tracking code 101, is materials for building standalone partitions. Next to tracking code 102, the restaurant wants to build an outdoor patio which would allow them to reopen with more seating, perhaps bringing them back to pre-COVID capacity levels. Next to tracking code 103, they want to buy picnic tables to put on the newly constructed patio. And lastly, next to tracking code 104, they want to enhance their website. The next columns are quantity and price. Next to 101, they're going to build 20 partitions that cost $100 a piece. Next to 102, they're going to build one deck for $15,000. Having a written estimate might strengthen the proposal. Next to 103, they're buying 10 picnic tables at $300 a piece. And lastly, they're paying a web developer $100 an hour for 40 hours to update their website. Again, having an estimate might be helpful. The yellow area multiplies the quantity times the price and will populate automatically. You can leave the yellow area alone. Going back to tracking code 101, if you're building something yourself, please don't do a line item for nails, another for screws, another for lumber. Just combine the cost to build one and then tell us how many you're going to build. The narrative in the last column is very important. It gives you a place to describe how the purchase of the items you have listed helps you reopen and conduct business in compliance with health and social distancing guidelines. Notice that there's a lot of detail. The partitions in 101 will help separate diners from each other. The patio construction in 102 allows the restaurant to seat more diners. The picnic tables described in 103 give the diners a place to sit outside on the patio, distance from the indoor diners. The website enhancement in 104 allows the restaurant to modify their business strategy to not only include in-restaurant dining, but to expand the business to more easily accommodate takeout dining. There is sufficient detail here for the grant review team to clearly understand how much this project will cost, and exactly what the money will be used for. There are some budget guidelines you definitely want to pay attention to. These are listed on the second tab of the budget template spreadsheet. First, as we've mentioned before, the Adaptability Fund is a federally funded program, and as such, all expenses have to adhere to federal guidelines as set forth in the OMB CFR. A link is provided there. I'm going to go over these rather quickly, but first, you cannot spend payroll money for work duties that are not directly related to mitigating or responding to COVID-19. Travel is a tricky one. There has to be a very good reason to spend money on travel or it is not allowable. Purchase of equipment over $250 must be well documented. Put simply, 
The government is not very interested in purchasing equipment for a business, and there needs to be a really good justification for doing so. Any professional contracts will be closely scrutinized and need to have a strong case for entering into a professional services contract. Just a few other points to repeat before we finish. As mentioned before, only expenditures between March 20th, 2020 and November 15th, 2020 are reimbursable. You cannot double dip. In other words, you can only be reimbursed once for an expense. Lastly, you need to stick to what you proposed. You can't propose building apples and then build bananas, although slight variances by line item can be accepted with reasonable justification. What I mean by variances is that if your estimate at the time of submitting your proposal are different than the final true costs, that's acceptable if the difference is slight. If the cost is significantly higher, you should reach out to MEDB as soon as possible for assistance.